needs to be eye-catching. It doesn't matter what job you have. If you focus and you're committed, you'll get there. It's glam time. I think that art and fashion can come together. This might be the best dress I've ever made. I love this. I wish that there was a fashion week every weekend and that I was invited to every single one. I just delayed that. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Mwah. Now that's the tea. Hello everyone, it's a pleasure for me to be here. And it's also a great privilege for me to be here with a special, special guest, Derek Blasberg, Director, Fashion and Beauty, YouTube. So let me give you some, some insight about Derek. He has always worked in the fashion industry, Vogue, Harper Bazaar, Vanity Fair, just few names to share about his amazing experience in the fashion industry. He is also a well-known journalist and author. And in 2018, uh, Derek decided to bring all his uh, strong fashion experience to YouTube. And he decided to lead a new vertical, YouTube Fashion and Beauty. So welcome, Derek. It's a pleasure to have you here. How are you? Ciao, Francesca. I'm great. Um, thank you so much for having me. I wish I was in Italy. Um, and I could see, see you and do this in person and have some some pasta, of course. But um, <laughs> I'm happy to see you, even if it's over a screen today. Wonderful. Well, you're in L.A., right? I'm in New York. I'm based in, I'm New York. in New York. Wonderful. So New York and Milano fully connected. So welcome, Derek. Welcome to uh, IF Festival. As I say before, since 2018, you had the privilege to lead successful YouTube fashion and beauty. And I would love to start with a very easy question. Why you decide to join YouTube? And what is your ambition for YouTube? Yeah. Um... That's that's an easy question for me to answer. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, I never thought I would work at a tech company. I never thought I'd work for a video platform. In fact, when I was going to university, YouTube didn't exist. You know, the social media world had not yet been defined. I went to journalism school and I really thought I was going to work for magazines and newspapers my whole career. Uh, I really thought that was what my future would be. And in 2018, um, Susan Wojcicki and Robert Kinsel approached me about launching the fashion and beauty vertical here at YouTube. Uh, of course, there have been fashion and beauty videos on the platform for years, um, especially in the world of beauty. We see creators who have become incredible multimillionaire media empires. So there was definitely that sort of content still existing and being created on the platform, but there was no one doing what I do, which is help uh, concept, strategize, curate fashion and beauty content. Um, to, be, to be really honest with you, uh, in the early conversations I had about the job, I wasn't super enthusiastic. Um, I never thought I would work in a tech company. Um, I really wanted to spend my career working with photographers and fashion designers and models and stylists and makeup artists. Um, but one day I realized that the future of storytelling um, maybe wasn't only in magazines and newspapers. And uh, what I do now is still work with photographers and fashion designers and models and makeup artists and stylists. But instead of doing that in the written word or in, uh, you know, photo shoots, now I devote my life and my career to storytelling through video with those types of partners. Um, I don't know how I don't know how far you want me to get into what I do. At no, YouTube, yeah, but... you're right. 
That's amazing because uh, uh, I can understand and we can probably spend one hour to understand, <laughs> you know, the reason why you just said to move to TACA. In a nutshell, it means like, uh, you know, life uh, is bringing to people opportunity and great surprise uh, and makes sense to grab uh, this uh, new opportunity. So thanks a lot for this. Of course, that has been, uh, I would say, a, a little shift uh, uh, or I would say, uh, talking about fashion with a different lens, the YouTube lens. I have another question for you because recently we finally met in Milano during the fashion yes. week, and it was amazing, honestly. Um, so we know that London, Milan, Paris, uh, this year the fashion uh, week has been really wonderful because brands, celebrity, everyone had the chance to meet in person, to keep building a, a relationship and stay really connected, not just digitally. And, and we know that the pandemic um, has changed a bit all the industry, also the fashion industry. And that means more digitalization and the ability of the fashion uh, industry and the fashion brand to amplify their communication also online. So I would love you have been in Milano, we met in Milano, you met all your friends from the fashion industry I would love to understand what this means for you to this change, you know, about digitalization and what is the opportunity for the future? This is probably only the beginning of the journey. Um, I mean, first of all, I should tell you, I was so excited to, to not only see you in person after having emailed with you for so long, but there are so many friends that I have that I used to see six times a year, eight times a year, and I hadn't seen them for 18 months. Um, so it was, it was surreal and bittersweet to be back in Italy. Um, I think anyone in Milan will agree that the fashion industry is one of the most important and thriving communities in Milan. And I can imagine that uh, for the past 18 months um, during this uh, tragedy and this uh, surreal moment through COVID, um, it was tough to see that industry struggle. So I was so excited to see um, shows happening again um, and one thing I will say that was was incredible is that in Italy, I felt super safe. Um, I know that the Italian Fashion Council took COVID restrictions very seriously and, you know, that they were measuring every seat uh, to make sure that they were the appropriate, uh, you know, uh, distance apart. Um, so I was happy to be back in Italy and I felt like we were doing it in a safe way. Um, so in the past 18 months, when we think about what fashion looks like on YouTube, uh, we had seen a lot of trends that were already happening, especially in the fashion space, accelerated. Um, I think that probably goes for other industries beyond fashion, trends that we saw happening in, in, the, in culture and in pop culture and commerce um, became radically accelerated with the advent of tech. So in 2020, um, we helped to build what became known as Digital Fashion Month. So we worked with more than 200 different fashion brands on ways to create a specific video, um, pieces of video content in lieu of a fashion show on a runway. Um, and in 2020, we saw a lot of sort of uh, surreal concepts and ideas. There is an American who spends a lot of time in Milan called Kid Super who did a stop motion fashion show. I don't know if you saw it. Um, Versace employed a, a New York-based videographer called Gordon Van Steiner to do this sort of surreal, um, you know, it wasn't a runway. It was almost like a piece of, it, it reminded me of an NFT, to be honest. You know, it was a, a dynamic moving camera situation. Um, and then when I saw you in September, uh, it was great to see, you know, runways come back and, and see... Um, you know, more than 70% of fashion brands currently uh, that currently show during the international collection, so New York, London, Milan, and Paris, more than 70% live stream their shows on YouTube. Um, we also saw more brands creating what we call companion content to their fashion shows. So in September, um, more than 250 brands showed their collections on YouTube. To date, as of today, that's more than 450 million views on these shows. Wow. Um, I mean, to take a step back, when I was when I was young, and I would go 
to a fashion show here in New York, there was basically two sorts of people in the audience. There was press, so uh, photographers or fashion editors, fashion editors who would shoot the clothes that they saw in the show for magazines and newspapers. And on the other side, there would be retailers. So you would have people who were buying the clothes to sell them in their stores. Um, and also you'd have a couple friends of the designer, maybe some celebrities. But right now what we're seeing specific to fashion shows is that they are for everyone. So platforms like YouTube have democratized a fashion show. And now anyone who has an iPhone or a laptop or a Wi-Fi connection can watch these fashion shows. And it's been great to be someone who's helping open up this industry to anyone um, who is interested in fashion or style or what kids are wearing. Um, and yeah, and, and we've, we're seeing such an incredible uh, array of content. Um, there was a That's show- That's amazing. That's, sorry to interrupt you, Derek. That's amazing because uh, you are describing a real strong evolution uh, in this industry. And I would like to bring to your attention another topic uh, that is very relevant, especially for young generation, uh, thinking about the fashion industry, how the brand uh, are, I would say, uh, evolving uh, and embracing a uh, new consumer shift. Uh, and what I have in mind uh, is uh, one of the most uh, common topic uh, that is authenticity. So be real, be you, be authentic. Uh, uh, I believe that this is something super important for everyone, how the fashion industry and how YouTube can really play a huge role in the space. Yeah. Um, I mean, to be very honest with you, when I joined YouTube more than three years ago, I underestimated how savvy YouTube users were. Uh, and I mean... Um, People who are using YouTube and watching YouTube content know immediately if content is authentic, if it's advertorial, if it's forced. They know what is considered original content, what is considered, uh, you know, sponsored content or commercial content. Um, and in the fashion space, what has been so awesome is we've encouraged a lot of brands to peel back the curtain to what they do and how they do it. And uh, Francesca, I'm sure if you were in Milan, um, I think this was a huge moment in the city. In September, uh, Donatella Versace collaborated with Kim Jones, who's the creative director of Fendi for a fashion yes. show called Fendace. Uh, and it was like this huge moment and Kate Moss and Amber Valletta and Naomi Campbell and Gigi Hadid were back on the runway. And, um, and we encouraged uh, Donatella's team to do a documentary around the collection, which they posted on the Versace channel. It's on YouTube right now. And when you mentioned authenticity and sort of uh, what is real content, um, that piece of content did super well. All our behind the scenes content was super well because I think people are obsessed with these characters in fashion and they love to see what their real lives are like, what the real backstage looks like. Um, so definitely, when we are meeting with new brands, uh, we are reinforcing constantly the importance of creating authentic and real content. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, it's been sometimes difficult. In my old life working for magazines, you really wanted to present the perfect image. And at YouTube, you actually want to see more um, behind the scenes. So if you, know, you want people to create content candidly and up close, um, and you want to feel like you're on set. You're not as obsessed with perfection as you are in sort of the old school. So real life, uh, real life real for stuff. everyone. Exactly. Yes. Th that's exactly. lovely. And, and I'm feeling very happy to see how this is evolving. Uh, also because we know that uh, um, brands are finding, uh, are looking for new way to engage with new audiences. Uh, uh, Jen said is a, uh, it's also really important for the uh, fashion industry. Authenticity is one of the topics that for new generation is really relevant, important. But uh, you have been a, one of the big um, sponsor and leader able to create connection between our, uh, I would say, creator ecosystem and the fashion industry. You were in charge of uh, connecting this to world. Uh, I would love to to learn more from you about this uh, initiative uh, because uh, 
this is uh, uh, has been uh, really important to connect uh, the traditional fashion industry with a new world uh, and now uh, in easy things at the beginning probably yeah um I have to be honest with you, when I joined YouTube, I thought this was such a simple idea. You would have these incredibly powerful YouTube creators, and you also had these incredibly um, mysterious and uh, polished fashion brands. And I really wanted them to interact. Um, for one thing, I know that fashion brands are now keenly aware of social media metrics, and they want to have views and hits and tags. Um, and I'm also keenly aware that uh, YouTube creators really want to be a part of the traditional fashion ecosystem. Um, I mean, just to speak honestly with you, uh, I invited Emma Chamberlain, who is now a very famous, super successful YouTube uh, creator to a Louis Vuitton fashion show several years ago. Um, I think the first time I brought her to a show was in 2000, it was spring 2019. So I had wow. not even worked at YouTube for a year. And Louis, to be fair, Louis Vuitton was very skeptical of interacting with creators at that point. Um, but they were open-minded. And when they saw the impact that Emma had on social media numbers and metrics, they were suddenly very uh, big fans of hers. And of they had said... They've since signed her on to be um, an ambassador, and she's gone to every Vuitton show since that one. Um, so once I think a brand sees the power of some of these creators, they become they become much more uh, aware of it, um, and it's been it's been much easier, and we're seeing a lot more of it now. So we brought Bella Porch to Miu Miu. Um, Liza Koshi was at Dior. Um, Addison Rae was at Versace and the Fendace show. So there's definitely a much bigger conversation between creators and the traditional fashion ecosystem. Um, and before, this is COVID, before COVID, we brought Charlie D'Amelio. She was already very successful on TikTok, but she, I mean, I think Charlie's probably very famous in Italy too, but in America, she's blown up. Her whole family has blown up. Um, and we brought her to the Prada show and, uh, I remember walking out of the Prada show in Milan in February of 2020, and it was the first time that she had walked out of an event and people were like calling her name and, and you like know, she star. was, yes, exactly. It was like her first like star. star moment. Um, and it was at the Prada Foundation in Milan, you know, 18 months ago. <laughs> Crazy how time flies. Yeah, time flies, really. And uh, I have probably, because time flies, I have probably the last question for you. We have uh, uh, discussed about how the fashion industry is more digitalized. You brought to our attention a lot of uh, amazing examples of how creators can work with brands. And uh, of course, you're in charge also. You're very familiar with uh, the Montclair campaign that we had at the end of September this year. It has been something spectacular. Uh, it was a global event, uh, Montclair Leverage, uh, YouTube uh, uh, launching a campaign uh, at the same time uh, in five cities. We had New York, Shanghai, Tokyo, Seoul, Milan, and it has been a, a very big uh, uh, project uh, where we had 11 designers involved since the beginning to understand how to merge you know, the digital experience with the physical one in order to give it to all the community around the world a really strong experience around Montclair culture. I would love to get uh, from you how this big project was born, uh, how we were involved. Uh, I believe that it's really important for the audience to understand how innovative brand can really make the difference in the fashion industry. Yeah, um, we've seen a lot of incredible collaborations between YouTube and Google with fashion brands. And definitely, I think in September, the Montclair activation was probably the biggest one. Um, I was in Milan and they, uh, you know, they, Alicia Keys, the singer yes, was the one you're who, right. hosted, who hosted the event from Milan and she was, you know, live stream and talk. I think it was the morning in Milan, which meant it was evening in Shanghai. Is that right? Um, Correct. And it was an incredible moment uh, to see YouTube connecting, you know, all these international cities um, and also uh, spotlighting a, you know, a, a super fabulous fashion brand. What I also like specifically about the Montclair activation was that they gave each of the 11 partners 
um, the ability to create a special piece of content um, that would engage with the um, with the with the entire Montclair experience. So you got to see these these eleven different designers creating different pieces of different collections, but interaction between them was a was a separate video, um, which was great. Uh, and last year we had a Gucci Fest, which is when, uh, in lieu of a fashion show, Gucci asked a couple of incredible filmmakers like Harmony Corinne and um, Gus Van Sant, and I think there were some other directors too, um, <laughs> to create uh, several vignettes of videos in lieu of a fashion show. So instead of a traditional fashion show, um, which was also a great way to see a, a brand partner um, with with YouTube. Um, and also uh, next week, um, YouTube is unlocking a lot of shopping experiences. And so we have a week of, of shopping events. It's called Stream and Shop uh, on YouTube. And we have Gordon Ramsay and Jackie Ina, uh, the Merrill Twins, and a bunch of, of brands who own, a bunch of creators who own their own brands coming to YouTube to interact with the audience. So I'm excited to see um, new ways that brands work on YouTube. I mean, when I started my career, a brand would create two videos for YouTube, a spring show and a fall show. And that was <laughs> it. So, and now we see brands creating behind the scenes, makeup tutorials, a day in the life, getting ready with me, nighttime beauty routine. You know, the future of storytelling is really video and a lot of it exists and thrives on YouTube. So I'm, I'm super pleased to, to work with brands in this, in this platform. So I believe that Derek, unfortunately, as I said before, time flies. Uh, this has been a great uh, discussion. Uh, and I really hope that maybe next year we can have a second, a second chance uh, to uh, meet again and have another proper uh, discussion about how the fashion industry is uh, evolving, how creativity can really play a huge role thanks to YouTube. Uh, has been a pleasure. Uh, I would love to have you. But yes. I hope we can do it in person. So exactly. So next time we'll go for a live uh, and in full person. of action. Exactly. Exactly. session. And exactly. thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for being connected uh, from New York. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Grazie mille. It's a pleasure. È stato un piacere. Grazie, Derek. Ciao. Take care. Ciao. 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 Abbiamo salutato Derek, è stato un piacere averlo ospite qua a IF. Derek è riuscito a raccontarci la magia del mondo di YouTube e come oggi noi collaboriamo uh, con i brand della fashion industry e non solo. Ci ha raccontato anche dell'incredibile uh, progetto di Moncler, quindi trattandosi di YouTube, trattandosi di video, non mi resta che salutarvi e far mandare dalla regia alcune pillole eh, di video che raccontano l'incredibile progetto che Moncler ha lanciato su YouTube. Grazie a tutti per essere stati con noi e al prossimo anno. Ciao!